And good morning, everybody. Welcome to live Q&A on the Dice Tower. I am in a super positively excellent good mood here um, for a lot of reasons. One, it's the week of Christmas. And regardless, even if I'm stuck at home, which for me, I don't consider to be stuck, right? But my daughter is home from college. One of my two daughters, one's off preparing for a wedding. The other's home, Amy, and that's fantastic. And... Uh, yeah, it's a quiet office today. Uh, Mike's here somewhere recording unboxings, uh, and it's and I don't. Normally, I bring a kid in with me each day. They do school here, and then they help me out with whatever needs to be done. Today, for the first time ever, Jimmy's here. Jimmy, you want to come say hi to people on the internet? All right, be careful. He's here to help me with the marble races. Don't trip over the wires. Over here. This is Jimmy, my second redheaded child. What are you doing right now? Really, this is how you're gonna. No, no, not how are you doing. What are you doing over there? Playing Mario one. Yeah. So Jimmy is six years old. He is in first grade, and there's no school today. That's good, right? Yeah. And why? What's coming later this week? Christmas. Yeah, that's going to be exciting. So, all righty. Well, this is Jimmy. He's not here for the Q&A. So, yeah, he has gotten big. You are tall. He's the tallest six-year-old I know. So, anyway, go back and play. Jimmy will help me later on with the marble races, right? Okay. All righty. So, hey, what a good thing. I am also, uh, this is a Q&A, so I'll answer questions here. Ask me whatever you want. I'm not promising to answer all of it. In fact, I might not answer many of the questions uh if your question doesn't get answered realize sometimes it's because i might have answered another q a where i get asked it a lot and i apologize for that but i'll try to answer as many interesting ones whether they be board gaming or not so let's get started here any recommendations for my colorblind father-in-law they really like ticket to ride and we just finished a crew honestly you just gotta just pick some games that you like and then look to see I would maybe just go to that page and look at the components, see if they're colorblind friendly. I don't have a top 10 or even there's so many good games out there, but I would have to sit and think carefully about each game. Like, is it colorblind friendly? Like, you know, obviously Ticket to Ride is. Um, I think there are more games that are colorblind friendly than not, although I think there's more than people think there is uh, that are not colorblind friendly. But yeah, that's, that's the best method I have there. I don't have any off the top of my head. Um... The top 10 games of all time isn't there. Actually, it, it, I will look now because I thought for sure it's there. Um, yeah, it says vote top 100 at the very bottom. So if you go to board game top 10 and 100 at the very bottom, that's weird. Let me refresh this. Why does it say top 10 family games? Oh, because that's what we're voting on, top 10 family games. Or best games start with the letter V. I don't know what this is all about. But at the very bottom. Um, what's my favorite Christmas food? I don't really have a Christmas food. So, I mean, well, we slide into desserts. So, dessert-wise, I do like Christmas cookies a lot. Can you tell us about the new... In I'm sorry, what? Yeah, I know you like Christmas cookies, too. We all like Christmas cookies. Uh, can you tell me about the new intro numbers for the top 10? Oh, yeah, I saw someone had made this video where they did some stop animation, and I thought, ah, it's been a long time since we've updated that, so I asked them if they could make them for me. They're not 100% done. There's still a bit more animation to be done on them, but they're pretty far along, and I really, really like them. I hope you enjoy them also. Thinking about doing Sherlock Holmes Baker Street Regulars remotely with three friends by mailing them one book each. Do you think this would work well playing, playing remotely? Yes, because you don't have to show each other anything in this game. So, folks, if you don't know what we're talking about, these are like graphic novels, and each person has a graphic novel. And as you flip through the pages, you, you're reading through a graphic novel, but it's like choose your own adventure. And you look at these numbers and go back and forth, but you can 
you might see something in your book that no one else sees in theirs because of who you are. Like if you're a tall person, you might see over a fence and you'll see a number that no one else can see. So you're not supposed to show each other the books in real life. So I think this would work really well over Zoom. Um, what's your top 10 hardest to make top 10 list of 2020? <laughs> ha ha. No, there's a lot of top 10 lists. I, you know, I get asked a lot to make the top 10 worst games of 2020 or the top 10 biggest disappointments, but we talk about that stuff. I'm already pretty hard on these games in the reviews and I don't feel like saying more to that, uh, matters. I just played a game over the weekend with my kids that we played and I am so excited about this game that I am going home today and it's going to be the first thing I want to do. We want to play it again with the kids and we're going to probably play it all week, I think, because it is that good of a game. What is this game, you might ask? Well, wait for the review. But I feel pretty sure I'm going to push this review to the very top and have it next week. Um, but yeah, there's other top 10 lists. Actually, I was going to make a, a list of top 10 apps, but I could not. There is like no information on it. I know I asked this on Facebook and people sent me different things. It's very difficult to figure out what apps came out in 2020. I suppose if I kept a better, you know, tracking of them myself, but you just can't go and look to see what games came apps came out in 2020. I went to Video Game Geek where I kind of did a search for it, but even then I'm not sure it's correct. And if it's and if it is correct, I played like three. So Root is number one, but I don't know what else came out. So I found that to be difficult to do. I also, there was another top 10 list I was going to do. Uh, which I never got around to doing. Um, and also, there is the... Uh, what was it? The, there's a top 10... Uh, I lost my... Oh, party games. That's a hard one to do every year. Are there any games you wish you had played this year but you didn't get to do so? E no. But yes. So what I mean by that is, no, I'm satisfied with what I played. I didn't have a whole lot of extra time. I played as many games as I could in the time frame. Yes, there's games I would like to have gotten to the table, but I just haven't got them in the mail yet, like Bonfire and Howler Toe, Tau, and a few other games. But I also got games here in the studio I haven't got to the table yet. Um, but I really pushed hard. There's a few big games that you did not see in the top 10 that I went out of my way to get and play. And they just weren't good enough to make the top 10 for me, obviously. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'll get around to some of them next year. I just don't feel regrets about that. There's so many games out there. I was talking about this earlier today. Uh, as I looked at some of the games people were talking about, Board Game Breakfast, one of them I said, oh, yeah, and I never got to play that game. And you know what? I probably never will. Just don't have time. There's just too many games out there. If your goal is to play every game, just as a spoiler... You're not going to because games are coming out faster than you can play them. And your only hope to play every game is for you to have started a hobby 20 years ago and you're pretty like I did. And I have a pretty good, you know, repertoire of playing a ton of games and I'm not even a percent of all games published. So forget it. How's the game miniature painting been? Well, uh, my daughter Holly and sometimes Violet are painting miniatures. Holly is painting. She's in the middle of painting uh, Starship Samurai. She's almost done with that. So that's kind of cool. Um, but uh, that's the, that's about it. Um, you know, it's, she's she's not a super fast painter. She wants to take her time and make them good. So once she's done with Starship Samurai, I'll probably have her paint the new game I was just talking about. I have blueberry cheesecake in my fridge. I forgot what your favorite was. Key lime. Come on now. What's my favorite Christmas movie? I get asked this often, and I, I, I don't know off the top of my head. I mean, most nostalgic is Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Um, but I don't know that I have. I mean, I like a lot of Christmas movies. I like the very, very, very stupid jingle all the way. Um, I like... Elf. I like, uh, I just watched Jingle Jangle, although that's not particularly Christmassy. It's a good movie. I just wouldn't call it particularly Christmassy, so I might not even count that one. Um, there's a lot. I would have to sit down and go through them. 
Got my brother yellow bird hot sauce for Christmas. Which should I have gotten? Oh, they're all good. They're all good. The yellow bird is a great brand. I, I like them all. So discover ether fields on your winter spectacular playthrough. It looks amazing. How replayable would you say the game is? Any permit changes to components? Uh, no. But also, why? When people say stuff like this, man, I'm mind boggled. This game is going to take me like 50 hours to get through the whole thing. Replayable? I feel like I finished it at that point. I guess I could go back and replay it again. But, oh my word, you must have a lot of time in your hands. And I think 50 hours is an understatement on my end. All us play through one scenario. There is at least 40 to 50 of those scenarios. Um, there's a ton of stuff in that game, and that's not even including the stuff in between those scenarios. Yeah, I guess the game's replayable, but who is asking for that? What was your favorite ugly sweater game this year? I don't even understand what you mean by this, and I'm really tired of this whole thing. It's such a dumb thing. Ugly sweaters. Everyone says ugly sweaters. Everyone wears them. Everyone likes wearing them. We have contests about them. If everyone likes wearing them, if everyone's happy seeing other people wear them, then they're not ugly. That's what mind boggles me. Just because something's bright and cheerful doesn't make it ugly. What kind of weird society do we live in where bright and cheerful and happy is considered ugly? A pox upon all of you. They're not ugly Christmas sweaters. They're nice Christmas sweaters. I like wearing them. So I actually lost track of the question here. Oh, have we ever planned on bringing a cruise to Europe? We would like to bring the cruise to America first. <laughs> uh, I don't think people realize just how difficult logistics. It's easier for you to fly to America and go on our cruise. For us to go to Europe and get the games there to Europe and all the whole Dice Tower staff to Europe. I mean, I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's very, very difficult and logistically improbable. Do all the marbles have the same weight? They do not. And yet, the contest is fair. Will you once, do once again a top 10 of publishers and validate which moved off your list? I'll do a top 10 of publishers at some point. Um, validating them, I don't need to validate anything. Um, but I think what you mean is, you know, explain why they moved off my list. Maybe, uh, maybe not. I, again, I think I'd rather talk about why new ones moved on the list. I listen to an older top 10 that re about games that replace other games. Will we do it again? And again, this is very similar. Yes, um, every year I look through all the top 10s that we've done in the past. And I think I usually look at like three or four years. And then I go back and look at those and add them to my list of uh, possible top 10s that we will do. We redo them every three or four years because that many games come out that I think it's worth doing. Also, as you've seen, we've had a lot of guests on our top 10s. And so that makes each list refreshing regardless. Have you ever gone caroling around the neighborhood? I've gone caroling before, but never randomly. Any caroling I've ever done in the past has always been like in a church setting where we would go to shut-ins and sing outside their windows or go to visit various older folks in the church at their homes and sing outside. And they always really enjoyed that. Um, but it was never random. I don't even know what Hot Ones is. Do you think 2021 will see a rise in big box store board game releases other than Funko and Ravensburger? I don't know. That is a good, well, maybe I'll slide that into my predictions I do next week. But we'll have to wait and see. Will Clown be in the Marvel race? Clown will be in the Marvel race. I actually, so, <clears throat> we have the marbles for the marble race, each in their own starting bin here. We got 
Ice, Ice Baby, Gray Fox, Florida Weather, Blue Meanie, Slush Ball, Nemo, Pretender, The Pretender, sorry, Electron High, Unicorn Dreams, Root Beer Float, Clown, Eye of the Pharaoh, Eye of the Storm, Flaming Hot, True Love, Montana Marvel, Pretty Pretty Princess, Molten Lava, Goblin King, The Speckled Knight of Teton, Pollen, Moonstruck, Yellow Days, Travel Buddy, Gangrene, Terrapin Titan, Wasabi, Nova, Strawberry Shortcake, Split Pea Stew, Stardust, Dead Spring, and The Brute. And more, I'm sure. I will be getting more of these cases and uh, keeping track of all the different marbles. Marbles. I'm enjoying GameFound so far after pledging to ISS Vanguard. I think GameFound is a very well system. Did you give it any thought about putting the Dice Tower Kickstarter in GameFound 2 for 2021? Yes, I've given it thought. You'll see what happens as the weeks go by. That's not meant to be a tease or anything. It just means behind the scenes we're still working on stuff. How long will the voting for People's Choice Top 100 be open? In, for about another minute. And I don't mean it that way. I mean... It's actually going to probably be open for a few more weeks. But I don't see when people ask me that question, it's like, who cares? Just fill it out now. If I give you a date, then people will be like, oh, I'll just wait till that date to do it. Just do it now. Um, or do it tonight. You know what I mean? It will be open until I decide to close it. I'll, you know, But it will be open long enough for people to do things on it. Just start dabbing and stuck between buying the games I want most of all or buying the ones that are of interest but that are difficult to get as they're going out of print. What do you think? Oh, no. Get the ones you're interested in. Don't buy games because they might go out of print. Doesn't matter. Even if they do go out of print, more games come in print. There's always great games out there. Always. Get the, get the ones that look interesting to you. How are the wedding preparations getting along? Thank you for asking. All right, moving on here. Um, I placed some bets in Vegas for the Marvel race. Great. Please don't. Um, I've seen other people on the network that you guys at Dice Star headquarters giving out seals. Don't you worry that it might diminish the value of a seal when everyone can give them out. Uno getting a seal of excellence. Well, first of all, it's not everyone. It's people that I vet it and asked to be reviewers of the Dice Tower. I don't think, I mean, let me rephrase it properly. I don't know that my opinion's any more valid than anyone else's. Now, I think my opinion carries more weight maybe than somebody who's only played one game. So there's that, right? But I asked everyone who is a reviewer in a Dice Tower has either me gone out and personally asked that person to be a reviewer or they asked me and I looked at their stuff and said, sure, come on board. But either way, I think highly of their review skills. So if they want to give out a seal of approval and seal of excellence, and I have very stringent rules on how they are, then yes, give it out. If I hate the game that they've given a seal of approval or excellence to, that's fine. But I have rules. We only give out a few seals of excellence a year per reviewer. There's not many given out. And if that reviewer wants to give it to whatever game they want, they can. Um... Love the Twilight Imperium playthrough with the interview comments throughout the game. Any more of those in the future? It's an interesting thing. We will consider that, actually. I didn't realize people would like it that much. Um, of course, there was threats made in that game, too, so I don't know about it. Oh, we had a great time playing it, though. And I will, now that the game's over, if you want to go back and watch it, I still do not know what Mr. Bonica was talking about. He called me the worst player of Twilight Imperium of all time. That is insane, because I didn't do what he wanted me to do. So I could have attacked Mechatol Rex and hurt Roy and might have won. Might have. It was like a 50% chance. But instead of attacking, Roy said he would give me a victory point. Bonagor gave me a victory point not to attack him. Mike gave me a victory point not, not to attack him. I got three victory points in one turn. I felt like if that's what a bad player is, ha, ha, ha. That's why he was in last place. He didn't mention that, did he? Um... Which game do you wish had a big box or better storage system? Oh, um, first of all, I don't think every game needs a big box system. I, it's getting a little out of hand. However, if there was one that I want a big box for, it would be Paladins of the West Kingdom. I can barely fit everything in that box, and that's with no expansions, nothing at it. Well, I mean, I upgraded its components, but still, very, very tight fit. 
I really wish that box was bigger. Is your top 100 done or will you still tweak it? Nope, it's not done and I will still tweak it. I'll probably put it together over the next week, um, over Christmas break and stuff. I have a pretty good idea what's going to be in my top 100, what games are going to be jumping in there from 2020. There's actually, I have a much older game that's going to shoot up pretty high on my list because I've had a resurgence of love for it lately. Um, there'll be a few games that fall off the list, not because they're bad, but because I just don't play them as much anymore. Uh, yeah, it's going to be an interesting list. I, I, I feel there will be a lot of shakeup in it. Will my number one change from last year? Even I don't know that yet because I need to sit the games down next to each other. What game will you be playing on Christmas Day? I have traditionally almost never played a game on Christmas Day because I am busy in the morning. First of all, so Christmas Day looks like this. Open presents. Put together presents. <laughs> Fix something that broke. Make Christmas dinner. Have people over, well, depending, for Christmas dinner, usually. Um, relax after Christmas dinner. And in this case, it's going to be relaxed by watching Wonder Woman 1984. And that's pretty much it. Uh, and then we relax. And uh, Christmas is a day of relaxing. Board games are fun, for sure, but I just don't normally play them on Christmas Day. Are you a bit nervous about the 2021 predictions? No, I'm not nervous because if I get them wrong, it's not like I get fired. Um, but uh, it's going to be interesting to see what predictions I can. Do you ever get tired of reading rule book, board game rules? Oh, for sure. But I keep doing it. Did you see the Mandalorian finale? If so, how long did it? How long did it take you to reassemble your brain after your mind was blown? Okay, I'm not going to spoil anything here, folks, so don't worry about that. But man, oh man. Now, so I see Facebook is now raging with people who are pro-Mandalorian and people who are going, it's not as good as everybody says it is. I am 100% on the side of people who think it's amazing. To the point being, it's definitely in my top 10 TV shows of all time. I hesitate to say it's number one, but it's definitely in my top 10. And season two, season one was great. Season two is unbelievably amazing. But I'll tell you why I think it's fantastic. First of all, I've been always, my whole life, I've been a pretty big Star Wars fan. Although I didn't see Star Wars until I was in a, uh, like 17 or 18, which is I know, weird, but that just happened. But I knew all about Star Wars because it just was in popular culture. Um, but I've always liked Star Wars. I love Star Wars, and I've read so many books for Star Wars. Um, I love reading about Star Wars. I've kind of faded off because they went to some place I didn't find as interesting. I never watched the cartoons, but my daughter liked watching the cartoons, the Clone Wars and stuff. And I've actually I've started watching them recently. Um, just because I want to, I, I'm, I'm kind of just like, I don't like the animation style, but I'm just going to grit my teeth and get through the animation style. Cause I heard the storyline's pretty good, but we watched the Mandalorian together as a family, everybody from Jimmy all the way up to me. My wife knows nothing about star Wars, does not care about star Wars. She's seen several of the movies. My other two daughters, two of them, have never even seen the original Star Wars, but they know about Star Wars to some degree, but not much. My one daughter, Holly, loves Star Wars, has watched every Star Wars movie, has watched the Rebels and Clone Wars, and knows everything about all that stuff. She's never read a book, though. Jimmy doesn't know anything other than, hey, it's Star Wars. And I'll tell you, every single person coming from all those angles, everyone loves The Mandalorian. Now, whether that's Baby Yoda effect or the really good stories, whether it be the quote-unquote monster of the week or the overall story, my daughter loves the callbacks to the extended universe. They pulled something from a video game that I played so much in college that blew my mind when I saw it. I was so excited about it because I love that was like a, a huge video game for me. And everyone has all these points, but at the end of the day, everyone liked it for what it was. Not everyone's a huge Star Wars fan. And it came together, and it was must-see Friday night viewing for us. That doesn't exist anymore, right? 
Nowadays, my kids binge through series, binge, 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 binge through anime series that are 500 episodes long or whatever. A new series will come out. Boom. They've watched it already. Now we watch it on Friday after dinner. Well, now it's over. But man, that was fun to get together and watch it. And I was literally yelling and laughing and shouting during the show. And it was just a great time. So for me, The Mandalorian is the best ever. Better than all the movies for me. And and I know people are like, it wouldn't exist without the movies. Well, sure, but James Bond wouldn't have existed without the books, but no one talks about the books. You know, I mean, it's, who cares what it's based on? I mean, that's a big deal and all. We can give credit where credit is due. But none of the movies brought my family together like the show has done. And so you can't take that from me. I'm not in these wars as to what's better than not. I'm saying for the Vassal family, the Mandalorian gets a 100% rating from me. And the last episode was pretty amazing. What do you do on New Year's Eve? Well, normally, for the past 20 years, I have held some sort of event. Whether it was a gaming event or fireworks or just get together and eat food and have a great time, I have done that now as so many years that I cannot remember not doing it. This will be the very first time ever in my life, I think, where I've spent New Year's Eve with only my family at home. It's a weird thing. So I don't know what I'm going to do. I guess we'll watch a movie, play maybe a party game or something, and I might shoot off a few fireworks. We are here in Florida where the weather is in the 70s right now, folks. I'm very sorry. Um, But, uh, yeah, that's what I do. Did the Lost Ruins of Arnak make it on anyone's top 10 list from the Dice Tower? Maybe. I I don't remember everyone's top 10 list. They made my top 10 next great games. Top 10 games after the top 10 games. How many good games came out this year? Again, I think it's hilarious that people think, well, if a game's not in our top 10, it must be garbage. Come on now. I, I played 500-some games this year. Maybe 400. Um, I forget the exact number. But still... For a game to make the top 10 is a very small percentage. This is always my people are like it can't be that good of a game if it didn't make the top 10. Yeah, it can. Arnak's a great, fun little game. It just didn't make my top 10, that's all. Yes, it is. The shortest day of the longest year. Actually, it's the longest, shortest year, right? Because yes, this is a long year, but also it's flying by like crazy to me. <laughs> Someone said, this year here, we're doing a Firefly marathon while playing Firefly. I bet the, the, the show finishes first. What do you think about most Kickstarters missing their schedules sometimes for more than a year? Oh, man. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We were late with the Dice Tower Kickstarter, but it is going out now. It happens. You The best laid plans, right? It's very difficult to get these things out on time, especially this this year. I mean, with the COVID coming on, eh, it's hard. Now, yes, probably some of these people could do better planning, but I'll tell you what, one small domino in the logistics chain can mess everything up. You get shipped a copy of the game. You're like, wait a minute. There's a spelling mistake on these cards. This is pretty critical. We need to fix this. And it adds two months to timing. So I don't get too upset about these things. I mean, yes, four or five years can be egregious or lack of communication, but I would give almost every Kickstarter at least a year, I think, in grace. I really would. I mean, it's been a year now for several of the Kickstarters that I've backed, and I'm just like, well, I'll get them when I get them. Now, the only time I find it problematic is kids' games which means I probably will back very few kids games on Kickstarter unless the turnaround time is really quickly. Why is that? Because if the game is three years late, the kid you bought it for is now three years older. So you got to really think about that. With kids, Kickstarter may not be the best thing. I remember there was a game on Kickstarter one time that was five years late, and there's some people complained and said, my kid is now a teenager. They no longer want to play this game. (laughs) I, I understand that.
Someone said the little toy train thing doesn't work. Mm. I apologize. I don't have them here in the room, so I'll have to check on that later. Email me about it, and I'll look. Did you finish Rhythm of War? How was it compared to Ready Player Two? <laughs> How can you compare those two things? One is a work is a part of the greatest work of literature I've ever read, and that's Rhythm of War. Ready Player Two. I finished it, but did not really enjoy it. It was there's a lot of problems with that book. What part of the board gaming industry is on the rise? Um, internet? Online gaming? Decline? Local game stores? I hope they survive this. I do not wish ill on local game stores, but this is a tough time, right? I mean, you have to go out of your way to go to a local game store. You're probably not going there for your weekly gaming night. Uh, and uh, if you're not going there, then it's easier to buy your game online, and that's definitely happening with some people. What was your food bill like when I have seven kids living at home? Pretty high, but I'll tell you, we just didn't eat out as much. You know, we eat at home and you just be judicious. My wife is a thrifty person, more thrifty than me by a mile. And that's very handy for uh, getting food for stuff. It's not too bad. <laughs> How old are the Vassal kids? I know Melody's 20 and Amy is about 18. Oh, Amy is a, yeah, Amy is 18, you're right. Um, and then Jimmy is 6. Yeah, it's like 6, 11, 13, 14, 16 going on 17, which is very Christmassy. I'm going to sing that song to her. Holly's very irritated because Melody decided to get married the day after her birthday. Says it ruins the birthday. I said it doesn't ruin it, but. Alrighty. Have I seen all of the other reindeer? Yes, I have. Yep. How will you handle Christmas this year, given that you have a large family with the first children having gone to college? Uh, well, my college children will be home for Christmas. So, same as we always have. Actually, I think, I'm trying to remember if Melody was home for Christmas last year. I don't think so. No, she was not. So, she wasn't home for Christmas. But everyone else was. But that was the first time. So this is the that was the only year we didn't have all seven kids home for Christmas. I mean, other than the years before Jimmy was born. Um, so yeah, but this is the pride of the last time, right? Uh, maybe they'll come home. But I don't get too upset over that sort of thing. You come home for Christmas. You don't come home for Christmas. Just come see us once in a while. Boris Karloff or Jimmy... Jim Carrey as Grinch Boris. What has been my favorite werewolf role? Sasquatch. Will we see more collaborations next year with other channels like the ones you did with Shut Up Sit Down? Hopefully. I have some ideas on that regard. Is Dwellings of Elder Vale worth it for two players? I don't know. I've not played it with two players. If you had to choose a race from Star Wars to be other than human, what would it be? And droids do not count as a race. Why would I want to be a droid anyway? Um, I don't know. Why would I? I just, what a weird question. I don't know. One that looked kind of human? I don't know. I 
I am the Grinch, so I hate Christmas stuff. Oh. I always wonder why people like get all on that, like they hate Christmas. I love Christmas. I really, really love Christmas. Um, have you ever seen Gels Marble Races? Of course I have. I, I'm not, and I'm gonna. I, I keep saying this because people keep emailing me. I'm not trying to supersede or do anything. My difference between my races and the gels races is I'm just trying to get people involved. So I want to make it more of a live event that you can watch and see your marble. I think I have marbles from like eight different people in here in the marbles that we have. And so that's what I'm trying to do. Just make a live silly event. Nothing very serious. I mean, his stuff's great and fantastic. I can't hope to compete with that. So I'm not really trying. I'm trying to do something different. What's the, been the best year of gaming? 2016? Um, 2017 is pretty strong. 2012, for sure. I've done my best years of gaming before. So 2012, um, it's hard to look at 1995 as a bad year because that changed gaming forever. But 2012 was, was the strongest year, but I'm telling you, I look at 2017 and I'm like, oh, I don't know. So many amazing games came out in 2017. We'll see. Top 10 Little Debbie's Tasty Cakes. First of all, it, it saddens me that you put those in the same category. If I did a Top 10 Little Debbie's Tasty Cakes, you would see no Little Debbie's on the list. Because any Tasty Cake is better than almost any Little Debbie's. Not quite. But, so Top 10... Tasty Cakes, number one by far, are the chocolate peanut butter, uh, the name of something mine, a little chocolate peanut butter things. Those are amazing, especially from the freezing. Ha! Oh, they're great. Then after that, the jelly crimpets, and then the butterscotch crimpets. Those are the top three. Boom, boom, boom. Then the white cupcakes with the white icing inside. Oh, pff, don't get me started on Tasty Cake. Mmm. How many marbles were sent in? Oh, quite a few, actually. And I'm sure there's more in the way. So I'm just going to add more as they come. Merry Christmas. I first learned about the Dice Tower from your Dominion reviews. Besides cards from Alchemy, do you have any specific cards you refuse to play with? I usually don't play with the super mean cards like Saboteur and things like that. I play with them sometimes. But just any card that hurts your opponent's deck and takes stuff out, I just find those to be unfun. Dominion is all a game about building your own engine. I don't mind attacking the other person a little bit, but I like the attacks to be somewhat mild. The cards like Saboteur were just so over the top mean uh, that I didn't find those to be as enjoyable. Oh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I might use that. <laughs> Let's see here. Hello, Augustus. Hello. Let's see here. I'm looking for stuff here. People are asking or just commenting here. Oh, Wingspan could use a bigger box. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Someone was asking about large boxes. Wingspan for sure. Um, I just played the newest expansion for Wingspan and realized I can't even fit. Wingspan barely fits in its box. And Wingspan plus the first expansion does not fit in the box unless you do some crazy stuff like get rid of the the card holder. The, the second expansion, ain't no way gonna that gonna happen. So, I don't know. Yeah, a big box wingspan would be nice, which I assume might be in the works since he's done stuff like this for Scythe, etc. What game most benefits from a playmat? Oh, there's so many. 
that are good with play mats. Wow, my mind has gone blank. I know there's at least one or two games that I will not play unless I play with a play mat. Champions and Midgard. Great play mat. I think that might be the number one for me, but I'm sure there are other ones. Rising Suns play mat. Oh, so good. Have you ever bought any board games that you saw in a magazine? No. Do you, I mean, yes, but not because I saw them in a magazine. Do you find good reviews from printed magazines about board games that swayed you to purchase? Maybe. I remember I read Games Magazine way back in the day, and I remember reading about Carcassonne, and it said, this is about farming, and it's fun. And I thought, farming doesn't sound fun. But the idea of putting these puzzle pieces together, that sounded interesting. I definitely read about Magic the Gathering when it first came out. And I thought, what an amazing idea. The collectible card thing just blew my mind. Because I was a big baseball card co collector or trading cards. I collected like I collected Desert Storm cards and Bugs Bunny cards and things. And I was like, wow, a game where you get different cards and my deck's different than the other person. I make a deck. That, and I might be able to beat them because I have a cooler card than they do. And I thought, what? That just was mind-blowing. I never did end up buying it because of that, but it put it in my mind. So I don't know. I think print media is pretty much dead at this point. Um, but, I mean, it's, I, reviews definitely get me thinking about stuff. Would you play Arcadia Quest base game with expansion heroes in the first play? Yeah, sure. It doesn't matter. They're just a bunch of heroes. Use one, use the other. Mix and match. If I'm teaching someone Arcadia Quest, I'll be like, here, 50 heroes. Pick the one you want. What's the progress on the Chronicles? Dice Tower Chronicles of Crime scenario. It's currently being worked on. Um... The I have someone writing it for me, someone who has written and done some excellent other scenarios. So uh, they're working on it, and I gave them the basic plot outline of what I wanted it to be. And when they're done with it, they'll send it back to me, and I'll go over it. So I figure a couple more months, but we'll announce it as soon as it's out there because um, I want it. I, I wanted to have it ready for you all, and so I hope you enjoy it when it comes out. But it is being worked on. So I've hired someone to put together one that I hope comes across quality. Wonder Woman in a theater or streaming? Uh, streaming. <laughs> uh, we went we went to a theater a few months ago. We were able to rent out a theater. Well, I didn't rent it out. Someone else that was very nice of them. And then we sat all around the theater, like socially distanced in the theater and watched uh, Tenet. Um, and that was a fun experience. It was a good time. But um, I don't want to rent out a theater every time we watch a movie like that. Yes, Wonder Woman is coming out on HBO Max. The first of many movies to come out on HBO Max. Every time people enjoy something, some people delight in saying they're better than the people like it. Well, yeah, I've got to be careful, though. I mean, if someone comes to me and says they like something, I think I have the right to say, well, I didn't enjoy it as much. I mean, because that happens, right? And I think it's fun as a nerd and geek to debate on whether you like things or not. That being said, the anti-people enjoying stuff does seem to be pretty strong sometimes. I like this. How could you like that? I mean, this happens all the time when with food, right? Like the pizza is the one I always think of. I'll eat pizza and someone will go, this is good pizza, but it's not as good as New York pizza. Well, we ain't in New York, so shut up and eat your pizza. You know, I, why don't we just send it back in? Uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, we, we, this isn't New York pizza, so we'd like to return this. Oh, so what do you plan on eating? Nothing. Can we buy? Can you buy a couple hundred dollar tickets and we go to New York to get this pizza? Which I've been to New York and had the pizza there, and it's not that much better. Look, I'm a key lime pie snob. Key limes are the best everywhere. But if I went somewhere and someone gives me key lime pie and I eat it, and that's the only place I get key lime pie, then I enjoy it for what it is. It's not as good as other ones I've had, but so what? But some people just seem to have to mention that every time. This is good, but shut up. Don't say anything else. <laughs> of course, I'm a board game reviewer, and I break my own rule there.
Will what's happening continue post social distancing? Yeah, I think so. I mean, apps aren't going away, and we I like doing it, so I think that one's continuing. I'm going to be making a few changes to the schedule starting next week. Actually, what's happening for me is going to be moving to uh, Tuesdays over Wednesdays, and I have a couple ideas for new TV and TV new YouTube shows for our Dice Tower channel that I'll be running over 2021, and or I'll have a stretch goal to run them. I hope you're enjoying Four Squares. We thought that format seems to be working pretty well, so. Your yearly predictions. Didn't you always do a new Descent third edition prediction? I used to do it before Gen Con, but I don't even think that the Descent is a third edition. They say it's not a third edition. It's a completely new thing. Uh, maybe I'll come around on Descent. I am currently not that excited about it. I'm kind of excited about it. There's no backwards compatibility, so everything I have for Descent second edition won't work with it. So I got to start afresh. It's really expensive. It's another big campaign system where the computer essentially runs the bad guys, and there are a lot of those in existence already. The thing I liked about Descent was I got to be the dungeon master. They took that away. It's no longer part of the game. So because of that, I just find it less exciting. Um, it just isn't as as neat. It's expensive. I like the app integration. That part sounds cool. But I'm just going to have to wait and see. Maybe it's neat, but my excitement for it is lessened. Also, Fantasy Flight is not as exciting for me as a company as it used to be. There may be games in your top 100 that you've barely played this year. Is that a problem for you? No. Um, do you wish you had more time to play games you know you love instead of new games you might love? No, I'm happy with the way I'm at. Every year it would get worse, right? Every single year, you'll have more games you like and fewer time to play them. It just is what it is. Sometimes you're working off memories. There's no good way to do it that will satisfy everybody. So I've stopped trying. Who's on the podcast tomorrow? Um, I believe it's everyone but me. The podcast is just a audio version of the top 10 that Eric, Mandy, Suzanne, and uh, Ella did last week. Because I, I said, why are we redoing this? Why, why? I said, this is getting ridiculous. Every year I'm doing my top 10 list twice. I do an audio version. I do the video version. It should just be once. And then we translate it to the other source. Uh, let's see here. Tom, have you read the Han Solo at Star's End? Han Solo's Revenge and Han Solo and the Lost Legacy? No, I did not read those. I started by reading the first Star Wars books I ever read was Timothy Zahn's Thrawn trilogy. Not only that, the very first book I read was the second book in that series. But it's a weird way to start. But I read it and I was like, this is amazing. So I went and hunted down the first book, read that. Then I read the third book and that was amazing. Love that trilogy. Said, what else is out there? Then I read Dark Saber and The Courtship of Princess Leia. Both of them a step down from the Throne trilogy, but, but both rollicking fun. And I read a bunch of other books. I read some books that were not good, like The Dark Fleet and... Um, a few other books I went through, and I just read. Every, I was voracious. I read everything. Although oddly enough, I Jedi somehow I got missed in that whole, you know, just stacks of books I was reading. Um, then I once I read the stuff with the Voracious Vong or whatever they're called, the aliens who basically canceled the Force, and they were gross and disgusting, and um, I didn't enjoy those as much. It just didn't. Those books. I mean, they, they tried to be splashy. They killed off main characters. Um, those books are obviously not canon since most of those characters they killed off showed up in movies. Um, they, they had a really weird halfway point arc where they put a lot of emphasis on one character 
Then halfway through, they were gone. And I just thought, what? And then another character became the main? It was a very weird way they did it. And after that, I kind of lost interest in the Star Wars universe. It just got, the extended universe just got, eh, to me. If Eclipse Second Dawn for the Galaxy wasn't a reprint, would it have been in your top 10 for the year? No. It's a well-known fact that only 10 games a year can be good. I know! <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, okay. I'll, 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 I'll look at it when I'm done here, buddy. Do any of your staff have a dice tower tattoo? I don't know. I don't think so. We've all keep like threatening that one of these dice tower conventions when they're back. Uh, we'll all go and get like a tattoo of our dice guys on us. I don't know. I don't know. Tom, what is your favorite dimension? The third. Um... When is the next Dice Tower Kickstarter? Starting in January. Exact date to be announced. Um, Steve says, so many people in this hobby seem to have a strong religious background. Why do you think that is? Because I think that board games brings people together, and I think you overthink that actual part see i know a lot of people in the, in the industry i know people from all i know lots of publishers designers i know tons of people and i would say the spread of people i meet there is both people who are religious and non-religious it is conservative and liberal it is a huge mix of people happily now there's a lot of women and men and we still need more uh diversity for sure but it for when it comes to belief systems the diversity is already there i met everyone and so you might think that but perhaps that's because you don't have that circle in your normal life as someone who is from christian circles very strongly and going into this it is definitely not the majority of the board game hobby at all there's a mix of everybody Uh, how shocking is it when it arrives too soon? A Kickstarter coming too soon? Yeah, it's always weird, but it's very, very rare when that happens. Game teachers have to have thick skins. If we go over all the rules, people say they are bored. If we don't go over all the rules, people blame us for not explaining everything. Yeah, I just don't care. You know, get, get off my back. I go over all the rules, then you explain and explain everything. I always say the game doesn't matter. It 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 doesn't matter. You don't have to. It's just a game. <laughs> Well, I've already talked about Mandalorian Season 2, but all the new Star Wars series, I find that exciting. I find it exciting all the, all the Marvel series that was just announced. I just find it exciting that something was announced for uh, Disney+. Plus. But I'll tell you this, folks. I am loving the streaming wars. They're amazing. For us as consumers, it's fantastic. If you say there's nothing to watch at this point, man, do you remember when there was 100 channels and you flip, 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 flip? I know some of you are about, I remember when there was three channels. Quiet, Grandpa. But remember when it was all those channels and you're flipping through them and trying to find something and you had to catch something when it was on and or maybe hope for a rerun and then DVR came out, blah, blah, blah. But now it was streaming and first there was not much. Now there's stuff on all the things and and, and people are like, I can't subscribe to all of them. Well, then don't. But you get to pick which ones you subscribe to. Now, if you're like me, you're probably already getting Amazon because Amazon Prime, baby. Um, Netflix, for sure. My kids, I think that's the number one my kids like. Uh, then there's there's uh, Hulu. 
There's HBO Max, which came on pretty strong. Disney Plus, which had a pretty slow start other than Mandalorian. There's not a lot on there. I know there's a few other small good programs on there, but not much. Yes, yeah, a Disney back catalog, but... Um, and then Evil Apple TV and CBS and now Peacock. I haven't looked at Peacock at all, so I don't know what they have. And all these guys are competing with each other and they're trying to do bigger and better stuff. That's great for us as consumers. It means that it's getting better. And then HBO Max just announced that all movies are going to be streamed next year, which I think is cool. Um, and I don't know. I'm just pumped about the whole thing in general. Competition here is fierce. And it's good for the ho hobby. I'm, I'm talking about board gaming. Good for board, for movies. It's good for us. And you might, again, people complain they can't get everything. Then don't get everything. Pick a couple. If I had to go down to one right now, it might be Netflix. But I tell you, with all the movies coming out of HBO Max next year, I think it might be HBO Max. I think that would be the one I'd pick if I could just keep one. Maybe. Netflix has a huge amount of stuff, though. Uh, again, I'm not counting Amazon Prime because I'm never going to get rid of that. I got I, I use it for delivering stuff. Uh, but those are the top two for me at this point in time. Hulu is okay. Uh, CBS is okay. I mean, if I didn't want to watch Twilight Zone or Star Trek, there wouldn't be as much there. And Apple TV needs to get their act together. There's some interesting shows there, but so very little content. But still, I don't know. The whole thing is interesting to me. Tom, have you ever read any of the Stormlight series from Brandon Sanderson? You don't watch my Q&As. <laughs> have I read them? <laughs> uh, what were the circumstances behind your decision to make a profession around board games? Watch History of the Dice Tower. I explain all that in actual some detail. So look it up on our YouTube channel, History of the Dice Tower, and I go through that. Um... I was listening to D6 Generation. They were talking about how their kids are in college. I had to get out my ID to check how insanely old I am. I know. I told my wife, I said, I, I realize sometimes our kids are growing up. Not only makes us feel older, but it makes everyone who watches our show feel older. I mean, when Jimmy's in college, you all know that you're old. I mean, the fact that Melody's getting married in two weeks and Amy's in college and I have a third kid going to college in a year and a half. And, you know, it is what it is. Wait till I say I have a grandkid. <laughs> Remember that fresh face, baby face, Tom Vassell, who liked everything, who showed up in 2002? He's 18 years older now. Gosh. Grandpa Tom soon? Well, I've been told I'm not being a grandfather anytime soon. So it's, it's, they need to finish police academy and college first, I think. Tom, that unmatch is getting a Marvel IP. Will you be playing more of it? That is correct. <laughs> How's Melody's fiance with board gaming? Is he a fan of the hobby? He is a sideways fan. Not sideways, a side fan. Like he likes some board games. He loves, loves Marvel, um, Marvel uh, deck building game. So uh, he loves that Marvel deck building game from Upper Deck. Um... To the point where he has almost everything for it. Now, Wookiee's not the only answer. I mean, I don't want to have to comb myself all the time. What do you get a Wookiee for Christmas when only when all he when he already owns a comb? Look that up. There is a Star Wars Christmas album, and that's one of the songs on it. What do you get? A Wookiee for Christmas when he already owns a comb. It's not a great Christmas album. <laughs> uh, but it's there. And it has uh, Anthony Daniels, a C-3PO. And I think that's it, actually. Yeah. Do you think that if all the Avengers were replaced Jedis... Would they have an easier or more difficult time with Thanos? Nah, Jedi's would lose to Thanos. The Jedi's were pretty stupid. 
Have you watched episode three? Pretty stupid. Tell me if you're dressed up as Darth Vader or Chewbacca. I have not. Any Christmas movies playing in the Vassal household and which is your favorite? Well, I am. I told my kids starting tonight, we're watching a Christmas movie every night. And they're like, are you talking about old ones from the 50s? I was like, well, I wasn't, but now I am. We're going to watch these movies and you'll like them. That's it, folks. I need to spend the next hour preparing for the greatest marble races in the history of uh, today. Not any of those. So we're going to go. Also, Jimmy wants to eat pizza. So... We will uh, see you all in an hour. Thanks for the questions. I hope you have a fantastic um, week. Come back and join me in an hour. Until next time, though, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching Dice Tower Q&A on, well, the Dice Tower. <laughs>